We were 20 years behind. You just can't catch up. Not making any money. We couldn't have quoted for that work before. We just wouldn't have been competitive. You needed help. <sighs> Dobson and Beaumont, thread rolling specialist based in Blackburn. This business has been going since 1917, but let's fast forward to 2020. Within this company, there was so much knowledge, so much experience, and they had a great reputation, but sadly, they were not making any money. We're here today to find out how they've turned this business around. Richard, you've got a wonderful story to tell us here, but let's go back to 2020. What was happening with the company? So we, we had a fantastic thread rolling operation, massive range of tools, and the knowledge was second to none, but the rest of the business was struggling to support it. So from an efficiency and a capacity point of view, and just a lead time perspective, our CNC equipment just couldn't support the thread rolling business. And you came into the business in 2020, didn't you? Yes, yes. Just just at the back end of COVID, um, it was a quiet time, obviously, for everybody. Um, but the business was just ripe for, for kicking on and, and moving forward. How do you turn a business around like that? What, what, what was your first initial thoughts? I'm going to do this. So when I came to the business, you walk around and you talk to the people and you look at the equipment, but you talk to the people and the people just knew so much and they were just desperate for a bit more guidance in terms of how can we make this business successful. Many of the people have been here 30, 40 years since they were apprentices. So then what was the first step? What did you do? First step was we fixed the canteen. Um, it was horrible, really upgraded it. And you could see that that, that sort of struck a chord with people because they were like, oh, you're not fixing. You're going to improve. Yeah, and you're, and you're not just fixing machines or you're not just painting the walls. You're actually making our life better. So that very quickly got them on board. And then they really started to open up about why haven't we got this machine? Why haven't we got that machine? Why haven't we done the other? And suddenly, all the things that I needed to know to help the business grow, they were just telling me. They were right. just telling me. You were investing then. You were investing in equipment. What was the first piece of equipment you went for? So the first thing we did, we had single spindle fixed heads. And the first thing we did was we bought a twin spindle um, with a bar feeder. Um, that made a massive difference, really took us forward. A little bit scary because it was a big leap in technology. Um, 20 years since we'd bought a new CNC machine. So that was a, a bit of a learning curve, but they were up for it. The guys were up for it. And we started to build our knowledge, really improve our capacity, start shortening our lead times and not being frightened by those those bigger orders that in the past would have been like, oh no, that's that's going to take a machine a week or a fortnight. It's now, oh, oh, we can we can slip that one in in that two or three day gap. And suddenly our capacity started to open up. Were you making more money by then? Starting to. Oh, okay. Starting to. So it probably took about a year to turn it from a sort of a break even position to starting to make money and and being able to predict that we were making money. Um, and four years on now, we're a profitable business, confident um, and looking to grow as much as we can. So what was the next point? Because you then went up to another level, weren't, didn't you? Yeah, so we, we, we started off with a, uh, a new CNC machine and it probably wouldn't have mattered what type of machine it was. But, but then we started saying, well, what machines really will benefit us? And obviously a sliding head, different type of technology, real sweet spot for long, thin parts that a lot of our parts are, whereas in the past we'd have had to machine them a couple of times and maybe grind them as well to hold the tolerances. Now the parts are coming off finished. So you're making a lot of components, CNC, machining them, and then they're going on to the thread rolling section of the business. That's right, 95% of what we machine gets thread rolled. So where, where, where was the leap to sliding heads? What gave you that confidence? What was that turning point? So once we started researching the machines, um, it was a case of let's go out and find what's out there. Um, we found that there were two companies in the UK that were probably head and shoulders above the rest. Other people we spoke to, once they realised the tolerances that we needed to, so 10 plus or minus 10 microns, they felt that Star and some of the other leading players were probably the right machines for us, so they backed away. So we ended up with sort of two real competitors for our new sliding head machine. 
two stars here. We've got two stars, yes, we have, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. why? Big leap, the first one. Massive investment for us. Biggest, biggest single machine investment the company's ever made. Um, six months after we had it, we were like, let's, let's, let's test the water and start quoting for business that we'd never have looked at before. And we won some business that's coming back from India, or has come back from India. So that gave you confidence? Yeah. Yeah, we couldn't have quoted for that work before. We just wouldn't have been competitive. Competing against India on a high volume part with our other, other equipment was just not viable. Tell me about the components. What's unique about your components that really suit these machines then? So long, thin parts, where the, the part is long in relation to the diameter, really, really suit the sliders. So by holding the part, by, holding, by machining the part close to the collet, you get really good control and really good tolerances. So once you start getting above five, six, seven lengths per diameter, it becomes difficult unless you've got a slider. But you keep that control and you keep that tolerance all the way. Even if the parts are metre long, you can keep that tolerance. Did you know you were buying the right machine and how did you know that? When you're spending £200,000, you're always a little nervous. Um, Star and Charles gave us a lot of confidence. The way they approached it, their professionalism, the support of the application engineers, they gave us confidence that they would look after us. You needed help though. I, you know, oh, totally. that's a leap. You know, from what you've told me, you needed to lean on the team. It wasn't a case of, oh, just get this machine. All of you, yourself, your team was starting from scratch. Oh, totally. We'd, we'd never programmed one. We'd never seen one. Um, we'd never operated one. And I know there are people out there that have got banks of sliding end machines. So another one to them is, is, is not a problem. So yeah, we needed a lot of confidence in the company. Um, we went to see quite a few um, Star machines. We went to see quite a few other machines as well, and we were able to, to compare and contrast. And Star were, were quite open about what they offered, um, and they, they delivered, they backed up. So they helped you with training. Do you still lean on them today though? Because you are a few years on. Oh yeah, we still lean on them. Yeah, we still lean on them. So if we have a product that's maybe a bit tricky, um, we've recently done a product that's about 1.6 meters long, 30 mil diameter. We were able to program it, but, but we weren't confident. So we got the application engineer in for a day, um, spent a whole day working with us programming, really sorted the product out, runs like a dream. Where would you say your journey is from four years ago to now? What would you say that you're most proud of? We're still going. Um, 2020 COVID, not making any money. That's, you know, really old machinery and an old workforce that's a difficult place to be. So now we've got a really mixed workforce, apprentices, really experienced people, modern machinery. And if you go and talk to the team, they believe we're gonna fly. We're in a great place, we've tripled our turnover, but we don't, we've not finished. We're just getting going. We've got loads of space, loads of capacity. We just can't wait to grow, can't wait to grow.